Hello guys and welcome back to another satisfactory guide and today we're going over factory planning specifically factory planning for a mega factory but it doesn't matter if you're not doing a mega factory because these like tips are still going to be beneficial to you. So unless it's your first save, you're most likely going to start out with a goal, whether that's 100 turbo motors per minute or just to build like a super clean factory like I do. But no doubt later down the line, your factory turns into like a spaghetti mess. Well, this guide will hopefully help you plan out your factory in advance so you never get to that point. And that's exactly what we're hoping to do with our Mega Factory Let's Play series that we've currently got going on. Now, if this is your first time playing the game though, I really do recommend you just playing it without worrying about the mess that you'll undoubtedly get into. It's part of the fun of the game and a great way to discover how you want to play the game. But for everyone else, first off, we'll be talking about how to plan your factory and then the best approach, covering the starter factory, logistics, efficiency, and various other things such as future proofing as best as possible. So first things first, you want to state your objective. This is really important. You can even go all out and write this up in a plan on Word, which is what I've done. Uh, for me, I want to use all the resources in the world and I also want the factory to be as clean as possible. Those are my two main goals. There are other things that I'm going to look into as well, but that's what I'm focusing on. Um, for yourselves, maybe it's something along the lines of creating X number of items per minute or to have a separate building for each item. It really depends on your playstyle, but it's really good to have this um, stated and put down somewhere that you can refer to later on so that you don't lose track of it. Once you have your goal, the next thing to consider is how you can plan for it. So item based goals are great because you can jump over to a website like Satisfactory Tools or Satisfactory Calculator and get the exact required resources for the end goal. I'd write these all down in an Excel sheet to help you keep track. You won't need this straight away, so make sure that it's in a save file and easily accessible later down the line. As for using all the resources, it's best to work out how much of each resource you will have. Consider maxing out all resource nodes and all also whether you're going to be using pure recipes. Again, I'd write this down in a spreadsheet, although it isn't necessary, but you do need to be aware that, for example, you'll be harvesting all the resources for the late game. The main problem for all of these late game plans though will be your logistics, but before we tackle that, it's important to look over the starting factory. There's no set time in game to start the mega factory. You could start one straight away, but I advise against this as you'll quickly need to scale up and renovate sections. It's much more beneficial in my mind to create a starter factory that is able to produce en masse all the items that you'll require for running your mega factory or for at least building it. For me, the mega factory begins when you have the ability to produce all the resources needed for your logistics. For me, this is upon reaching aluminium alclad sheets, but perhaps for you, it's reaching batteries or trains. Just know that the earlier you start, the more work you'll need to do renovating the whole system. The other really important thing to choose earlier on is the right location. This is super important. You want an area that has enough space to construct everything and you'll always need more space. So the best places for a mega factory are often in wide open areas. Don't worry about the nodes as you'll be transporting items from all over the map to this place. Some great locations for mega factories are over the water on the west, north and east coast or also over the void in the south or over the void under the map, should you wish. If you don't want to go over the water or over the void, then other great places are the rocky desert, the plains, or the dune desert. They've got really wide areas and make it really easy to build a mega factory over. But of course, with enough Nobelisk, any area can work, but the above areas are great from the get-go. Whilst on the subject of logistics, let's talk about the methods of logistics that are available for us. So we have conveyors and pipes which are best used for early game transportation from nodes and are of course used for all factory logistics throughout the, the tiers. They are also the bottleneck for all our logistics and they're a pain to set up and upgrade over long distances. 
We then have vehicles which are still incredibly buggy, so never use tractors and trucks unless you just want a cool looking factory. I mean, you can use them, but I'd wait for the vehicle update, which should be coming soon, TM. Trains are also great for transporting bulk items long distances. They have a higher potential throughput than conveyors and can reduce FPS loss. They're also easier to set up and upgrade. And if you want a video on rail design, then do let me know in the comments section below and you might see that soon. Drones are the newest option that are available for logistics. They can transport items quickly over long distances, but can be quite expensive to run, requiring batteries for each trip. But don't worry, I'm going to be doing a super efficient build guide on battery layout soon, so don't forget to subscribe if you need help with that. Now, lots of people have asked me recently when I'd recommend transporting resources. Well, as a rule of thumb, for me at least, transport as few resources as possible. For example, iron ore to iron ingots is a one to one ratio. It doesn't matter if I smelt at the ore deposit or at the base, I'm still transferring the same number of items. This of course can change, however, depending on the recipe. So if we're using the iron alloy recipe that turns two iron ore and two copper ore into five ingots, I will definitely refine these at the mega factory as this will require us to transport either four items to the factory or five, and it will be easier for us to transport less over the long term. Alternatively, if we're producing caterium ingots, which require three ore to produce, then I would rather smelt these at the ore node to reduce the load for the method of transport that we're using. Now, when it comes to train logistics, I prefer going down the route of pulling all the items and resources from the nodes to a single location to be sorted. You can see the startings of my train nexus or distribution center here. The idea is all resources are brought here and then sorted to a designated train for each item to be sorted in the mega factory. Now I've made a mistake here and not given myself enough room for sorting. So this will unfortunately require me to do some reworking. And this will actually, we'll talk about later on, but you should always make sure that you have extra room available. Now, the reason that I do this is to save me from sorting all the resources at the mega factory, which could easily turn my whole logistics there into a bowl of spaghetti. Now we've got resources at the factory, the big question is how to start without getting overwhelmed. This is where you return to that Excel sheet to produce those items, but before we get started, you need to know what system you want to use in your factory. A lot of people use a tiered system, producing the first level of items and taking them up to the next level to produce into the second tier of items, and so on. This is a great way to do this, but you have to be really careful about transportation of resources across the levels, which might get really complicated really quickly. Another common way and one that I personally prefer is to produce items in modules. For example, there will be one large module dedicated to computers. And within that module, there will be smaller modules of all the items that are needed being created. In this case, all you need to do is make sure that you have all the re raw resources and materials that you need at this factory in order for it to run. I've also noticed some factories that run a bus system, running large amounts of items through the factory that will be pulled off and be um, produced into whatever given item they need. This is a pretty cool system, but you'll find that for a mega factory, you'll need a huge bus, so I wouldn't recommend this. Now these are three options that are certainly available to you, but they're by no means all of them. So if you do have any suggestions yourself, let us know in the comment section below. When it comes to these production lines in your factory, another thing to consider is whether you want to run everything efficiently. For myself, I try to make sure that everything runs at a 100% resource consumption ratio, but perhaps this isn't for you. There's no reason why you can't fully saturate each line and take items from them. But for me, I like to make sure I know exactly what goes in and what comes out. You can also think about load balancing and manifold design, but for mega factories, I would recommend going down the manifold route as you're going to be running a lot of lines. 
And once you've got an idea as to how you will run your factory, you will need to plan the logistics, such as any roads, rails or conveyor buses that you will want to use for transporting resources. Make sure you set aside plenty of space for these going in between the areas. You'll also find that the factories always get bigger than you planned. So always give yourself extra room than you think you'll need. The same goes for me with the train nexus. Give yourself plenty of room in each area. Now a mega factory is a huge undertaking and I hear so many people give it up after they've done one large refinery saying they need to do 20 times the amount they've just done. Break the factory into smaller bite sized chunks and this will help you see the progress that you're making without stressing you out. The next thing that I want to touch on is future proofing and there are a few things that we already can presume are going to be coming to the game based on info and leaks that we've had. There's a planned priority switch which suggests, though it isn't confirmed, that logic gates may be coming. And obviously if you want to use these then you need to make sure that you set the factory into circuits even if you leave the switches on the whole time it's always good to have and for more information on circuits in Satisfactory I'll put a link above. We also know that trains will have some kind of collision in game so that suggests that we will have signalling. To make this easier on us it's best to set up a one way rail circuit. This will save us from headaches later on. And whilst on the subject of saving ourselves headaches, the other thing that I want to touch on is running your factory at 100%. Use awesome sinks at the end of any overflow lines so that the factory is running at 100% all the time. This will ensure that you're running within your power plant limits whilst gaining a comfortable amount of coupons for free. And while you're at it, build a backup of power storage so that you've got a safety net. That way there'll be no nasty surprises. So there you are guys, 14 tips for planning out your mega factories. And don't worry, we'll be following this up with some more in-depth guides whilst we progress with our own mega factory let's play. So do let me know if you have any suggestions for mega factory tips in the comments that I may not have covered below. And who knows, we might mention it in the next guide. But we are going to leave it there. If you did find this helpful, then please do drop a thumbs up. And obviously, if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, thank you so much for watching. And thank you to our amazing supporters, most notably our Solar Eclipse patrons, The Calamity and Cerebral Tag, as well as our Lunar Eclipse patrons, Chris McCabe, Lord of July, and James Irwin, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Shlom. Anyway, guys, until next time, as always... Ciao for now.